Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For anyone who is new, my name is Chelsea. I'm a professional artist and this week I'm giving you a look at a special commission. This painting was done for a collector's birthday and it's of her beautiful poodle, Rhett. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new paintings. And if you can already tell you're going to enjoy seeing this painting being made, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. To start out, I want to talk a little about proportion. So rather than going for a really technical drawing before my block in, I opted to go in directly with paint. That meant Early on, I did a lot of comparing my painting to my photo reference of Rhett to make sure that everything was in the right place. Now, with the non-commissioned painting, I might not be this exacting. I have the freedom to deviate from the model if I think it'll make a more compelling painting. But for commissioned portraits, whether of a person or a pet, the likeness is the first priority. So before I start, I want to go ahead and plan the entire piece in Photoshop using my photo. I crop the image to exactly the same aspect ratio as my panel. I lay the subject out exactly as I want them in the composition, and I go ahead and figure out the background too. This way, I can have a one-to-one -one comparison of the painting to the reference, and I'm checking this early and often. In Rhett's case, I adjusted his muzzle and eye position early on, which really transformed this from the proportions of maybe an Irish setter to something that was distinctly more poodle-like. Now I want to move on to color. What I really enjoyed about this painting compared to the recent pieces I've worked on is the challenge and beauty of capturing all the color of a white poodle. It's very easy to see everything from the creamy areas of Rhett's coat, especially in his ears. But then additionally, there are these beautiful blue-green shadows on his chest and in parts of his ears where the light just isn't able to reach. This part was really exciting to me, seeing just how much color I actually needed to bring into the piece to make it look real. By contrast, what I'm not doing is going ahead and saying, well, he's a white or cream colored poodle, so my shadows are just going to be a little bit more gray. But as you can see in my block in, that is absolutely not the case, and I think that's what makes this painting so special. Not only that, but it is an awesome lesson if you ever want to paint either a white animal or you have a still life with a lot of white in it. Look at your shadows and pay attention to what color is really there. I doubt it's just gray. Then once this color is introduced, I'm really just alternating back and forth between taking my shape smaller and smaller until the detail is there and then double checking that my colors are still working. This is definitely a matter of push and pull. Occasionally the colors might go too dark and then rebound to being a little bit too light until finally I'm satisfied with how everything is reading and I can go ahead and punch up the intensity of the background and sign the piece. Finally, as a bonus, I wanted to include a super satisfying step that I haven't included in any of my videos so far, which is varnishing the painting. This is done with Gamvar gloss varnish and a two inch blender brush from Rosemary and Company. Um, I use this for varnish and nothing else to keep it 100% clean. Gamvar is great because it's archival. It can be removed with a gentle solvent like Gamsol and it allows the painting to continue curing after it's been applied. That means that the painting only needs to be dry to the touch instead of taking the full six months before you can put the varnish on. For this step, I'm trying to use a minimal amount of varnish, just enough to effectively cover the panel because adding too much too quickly can cause the varnish to beat up and refuse to cover certain areas of the painting. I haven't found a clear cause of this. Some people talk about the brand of paint. Some people talk about the humidity in the air. I've noticed that if I prime my panels a certain way, they might be prone to this. But the one thing I have noticed is that I can circumvent this better if I'm using a really thin layer of varnish because I can always go back in with the second layer if I need to. But some paintings simply have this issue and others the varnish goes on without a single hitch. Thankfully, this very special piece took the varnish right away without any issues. After the initial pass, my next step is to go in one last time with my clean varnish brush just to make sure that the final coat is even and that I've removed any lint that may have gotten caught in the varnish during the first pass. 
And here's the final piece. So do you have a pet that you would love to immortalize in a painting? Comment down below. I would love to hear all about them. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this one.